here today. So what we'll do, we'll do a little tour of how the plot's getting on. So let's start the, uh, the tour of the plot. Now I'm not just looking at me Montana there. It looks like it's dying for some reason. I don't know why. I think we'll come back to that. We'll have a look at that. Uh, a little bit more interest because I can't understand what's going on. But anyway, we'll we'll carry on inside the plot. Uh, this bed here, that's going to be where I'm going to put my dahlias. Now it's been there's none in there. Uh, they're all uh, starting inside the, the greenhouse, but that should hopefully midsummer be be full of my dahlias. Everything else is coming on well. Strawberry beds doing really nicely. There's flowers on my strawberries there, so let's hope we don't get any frost. But uh, we'll go into the first greenhouse. Now, I've got, right, I've got uh, four tomatoes uh, started. Uh, there's two more spaces for two here. I've got Roma, I've got something uh, devil, um, what's the other one? Black cherry and. Robella, I think that, that says I can't quite read it up here to be honest with you. Uh, but everything else is coming on. I've got my other tomatoes coming on well here as well. Uh, my golden sunrise, my plum tomatoes, um, my cucumbers, lettuce, uh, Apache, and cayenne peppers in, 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 over there. Um, I've even got a. Uh, what have I got there? I started off. Apple pips from a uh, Rayburn apple. Now I know they might not turn out to be uh, a true Rayburn, but I'll be able to use that uh, as stock, um, root stock, uh, and see if I can graft uh, one of my other apples onto it. But we'll see what happens. I've got a few come up there. It's about three, so I'll, I'll I'll let one grow fully and see also whether whether it does produce apples. Um, what have I got here? M Mediterranean lavender. Now. I just uh, shot a little bit off uh, somebody had one and uh, I put a cutting in and that's been in now for about just over nearly three weeks so hopefully it's taken uh, more, 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 more me peppers now I bought these ones or a friend bought them for me scotch bonnet uh, especially the, these three here um, there's my sweet corn which, which I grew from seed also all my, uh, my courgettes and my marrows, they're all coming on well. Right, moving on out of here, into the second greenhouse. I've got more sweet corn. Uh, another week or so, and I'll, I'll give them a chance to put them out, I think. Uh, more um, beetroot, uh, more um, and then, uh, turnips, snowball turnips, cabbage there. Um, Broccoli there, more cabbage, me, me leeks, it don't seem to be coming on too well, it's been like that for a while now, but we'll see. Uh, more, um, cauliflower, now I've not I've never had any success with cauliflower, but as soon as I get a space egg, I'm going to go in. On this side, I've got more spring onions, which I've already put some in outside, and they're doing well. So let's move on to this greenhouse, come on Alf, move out your way. There's our Alf, he's come to give me a hand, haven't you Alf? I don't know if you got that, but uh, I've just pulled uh, a potato that was growing between my peas there. Uh, in fact, I can see another one there, so I'm going to get that out. You just see it there. You think you get them all out, but I oh, got it. Oh, the... So, that's out. So, yeah, so my peas are coming out now, please with them. Uh, they've been in a week now. Over here, I've got my chard uh, and my cabbage, my drum egg cabbage. Yeah, potatoes, they've just started coming through. Now, I put a load of grass cuttings on top of that. And some people might say, no, don't do that. But I've done it before and it's been, it's been okay. It's what, you know, it, it, builds, it builds it up. They're quite deep down on potatoes anyway, so uh, quite well down. So it should get a good crop. I just hope uh, there is no lot of detrimental about the, uh, the grass. But as I say, I have done it before and it's been all right. Uh, more potatoes in that one there, but unfortunately there's no sign yet. My asparagus, we've had a few pieces of asparagus, so that's not too bad. 
over here. Uh, some garlic and a few onions I'd left over, just thrown in. Under there is my uh, snowball turnips. The garlic. They're coming on well now. What have I got here? Ah, I can't remember what that is now. It's a Chinese Chinese cabbage. I can't think of the name of it to be honest with you. That's a Chinese cabbage. There's the spring onions I've already put in. Uh, they're, they're doing well. Uh, and underneath there is beetroot. They've been in about nearly three weeks, so they're coming on well. The onions, we have a winter in onions. Ooh, they're looking good. And again, on this side. I'm moving down to this bed here. Uh, this, is our, I, this is another flower bed. But, you know that cold, really, really cold winter we had? Well, believe it or not, I left a daily room. It's quite a big one. But, I can just see it now starting to shoot. Whew, I'm pleased with that. I really thought I've got no chance with that one whatsoever. The climbing roses are, are coming on well. Starting to go up the solace. Uh, we'll go into the polytunnel, I think. As well, in here, I've got my uh, me dahlias and the begonias. So, uh, there's not many begonias uh, breaking through. Uh, certainly the uh, the dahlias. Begonia in there, that's starting to break through, I can see that. And also, in that one there, I just see them breaking through there. All my uh, geraniums. Got them through the winter. The back there, calendar. And at the front, Cosmos. There, I overwintered them as well. I'm quite pleased with that. They're, they're begonias and they survived just like this one here. Now then, in the corner here, there's my grapevine, which you've got growing up here and it's growing well. But I'm not sure. I, I, I've got another one going along. It's the same one, same plant going along that bar there. But I've got a few shoots coming off here, there and everywhere. Now, is it best for me to cut them off? Or leave them on and just train them somewhere else. But uh, will, will that stop the fruit? Because that looks as if it's uh, fruit starting. There's quite a few of them there. But but last year I got a few, but they were just very, very small. And I'm just wondering, is it because I'm leaving these uh, side shoots on? Taking all the goodness. Uh, a few lettuce. They're, uh, they're taken. A few lettuce. They've taken, so they're coming on fine. Back out of the uh, potato. They eat me potatoes. Well, they're my blackcurrant bushes. And uh, they're doing very nice. There's plenty of blackcurrants on them. Seem to do well on these uh, bushes. And for some reason, I don't know why, but... Birds seem to leave them alone. I don't know why. I get these, everything else. Uh, my potato buckets. So they're, uh, they're all started to grow. More onions in this bed here. My pond here, my wildlife area. Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, I see the frogs going in now. I've just seen one there just jump in. Yeah, so that's good. Now then, my son's a gardener. He doesn't know what the name of this one is though. But he got me this last year. And I put it in that pot. And it's actually, uh, well, as it's, it's, you can see, it's grown apart. It has quite a big flower and I don't even know what so if anybody can recognise it, please let me know. Yeah, plum tree. There was plenty of uh, blossom on there, but I don't know whether they're going to turn into plums. I can see a few there, but last year nothing happened, nothing materialised, it was the same. My apple tree. Now then, that's the apple tree which I've, I've mentioned many times before. I started that one off back there. And then used the, the rootstock and grafted uh, one of my own apples, Fiesta apple, on, onto it. And had, that's come on really great, that, so I'm really chuffed with that. Cherry tree. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty, it looks like there's going to be plenty of cherries on there. If I can get them before the birds will be laughing. Pear tree. Again, looks like there's plenty. Of, you can see some, there's a pear there. I don't know if you can see that one as a pear. 
bit of there as well. And there's a few. A few there, so pleased. Down here are my carrots. So um I I only seeds in about about five or six days ago, so don't be saying that yet, but I think that needs more so gain another apple tree. I'm not sure if that's a, a golden wonder, I'm not sure. Uh, rhubarb's coming on great. I just need to say I've got a seed head so I'll have to get rid of that. This is also a cherry tree which my mate gave me this year, took the other one out that I had here and I've, I've planted that in this place. It was in a big pot, uh, very similar to the one that's over there in a pot. They give me both of them so please uh, uh, and again another plum tree but I don't think I'll get anything off this. I got this from uh, Aldi. I think this is a second year now so maybe next year we'll see. Uh, so everything seems to be going hunky dory as they say. There's another little apple tree there in the corner and a conference fair there by the pond. And round here there's my gooseberry bushes, which again I've got gooseberries on so oh I love them, they're gorgeous as well. They are really sweet ones. So moving on from my gooseberry bushes, there's my raspberry bushes. Uh, now they won't tie up. Uh, I've got to get, uh, get them tied back and get them sorted out. So there's a job for me to do when I get a chance. So moving back up the uh, up the plot. I've taken these uh, seed heads off the uh, rhubarb, so I'm going to put them on my compost now. So, what a beautiful day, isn't it? Oh, I can't believe how nice it is. How it changes one minute to the next. But I'm going to have to go and investigate that uh, clematis Montana because I started that from a little cutting and it was absolutely gorgeous the last couple of years. So. There's definitely something wrong there, so we'll have a look and I'll let you know what, what, what's happening. Alright, we'll go back to that Montana and have another look, investigate what has happened to it. But it certainly uh, died. Uh, and there's another one on the site. Uh, the chap over the way from me, Sam, he's got one. His is always uh, well, flowering it, but now. It's normally well in, uh, in flower. And his, I went over because I thought, well, somebody's killed mine. I thought with a bit of weed killer had got to it, but he's quite a way away from me. And his is exactly the same. So I wonder, could severe frost kill a Montana? Uh, I've had them for years in different gardens. They've always survived uh, the winter. But what else could it be? It could it be that it started, the frost has got to it, and it's knocked it back. But let's go and have a look at this. Right, looking at this, you can see where it started. You can see the leaves on it, and it's just, they've all just totally died back everywhere on it. You can see that. Now, as I said, I'm just wondering whether it would frost damage it, because we did have uh, some severe frost uh, about three weeks ago, wasn't it? But you can see where, as I say, it's actually started, it's just so frustrating. And it's totally gone. There's nothing on it at all. I'm really sick about that because I love these. They really look nice going over that arch. Mm. Anyway, something needs to think about. Mm. 